Made with Opinion, the world's first easy to use podcasting app. Welcome to the Macho Burger Podcast. This is the second episode. I am Dylan Nell. Uh, last week, uh, last week's podcast went well. Actually, went better than expected on my part. We actually had 800 views or listens to it on a uh, uh, SoundCloud, and uh, I'd also like to say thank you to all the fans who have uh, been coming up to me and on um, on Facebook and been like, "Dylan, that's really good, man. I'm proud of you," and stuff like that. Uh, and once again, if you do want to be on the podcast, you can message the Macho Burger Productions fan page on Facebook, or you can message me or uh, Jonathan Jacobs, but preferably me. Um, but today we have a uh, special guest with me, one of my best friends, uh, Mr. James McDowell. James, come on, let's go sit there. and. Just What's up, something. guys? Uh, I'm James, and... My first time on a podcast, and I'm just hopefully, hopefully here to entertain you. So far, you're you're doing decent. Well, good to hear. Uh, you are the very first guest. Yes. And you know what you get? You know what you get? What? Being, you, what do I get? You get a biscuit that you personally have to go buy. Ah, I yeah. bought one this morning. Oh, see, you already you're already a winner. <laughs> already won. You're already won. Uh, or I, I can give you a Butterfingers bar if you. No, I'm, I'm good, man. You know what? Well, I tried. No, thank you. Well, you get nothing. Except for a biscuit you've already purchased earlier this morning. Good. I'm, I loved it. Uh, we're just, I'm just going to talk to you about different things. How do you feel about that? That's completely fine. Good. Um, now, you when you, were in, you just graduated here recently, right? Yes. Graduated uh, June 13th, 2015. Uh, uh, just t- tell me what was, what was like in your mind whenever you were graduating. Before or during? Both. <laughs> well... I was pretty, I felt weird about it, because okay. I I hate the fact that I did not like high school until I was a senior, and then whenever I knew it was going to end was whenever I actually started to like it, so I felt, I felt like I wasted time. Yeah. I felt like I, I wasted three years of my life not enjoying something, and then I ended up loving it, and then it was over. Yeah. Now, during, I was ready to get that shit over with. School was done, and I had all these fucking exams I had to take, and I was just done. But uh, uh, going into your mind, when going into like walking into CVCC uh, for for the actual graduation, not graduation practice, how, how did you feel like going into it? Like like this like this is it. This is the moment. Well, I was nervous at first, of yeah. course, because you know you get it drilled into your brains that. You don't want to mess this up, and this is your day, and all this stuff. And I was nervous that I would mess it up, and I mean, I was, I was happy. I was proud of myself. I think the more more important question is, did you mess it up? No. Oh. Well, I I messed up. I messed up at uh, at graduation practice. Oh, well, that's okay to mess up there. Yeah, but practice. I did it. I did it on purpose, so it's funny. <laughs> so it's funny. I it was me, and I was sitting beside uh, this girl. Right. And uh, we'll, I, we'll I call t- her Sally. We'll call her Sally. All right, Sally. It's funny because her name actually rhymes with Sally. Oh, but um, <laughs> well, you see, I told her I was like, how, how I was like, I should mess this up. It'd be funny, wouldn't it? And she said yes. So whenever all the junior marshals would be there to raise their hands and you'd yeah. stand up, I stayed seated. <laughs> I just sat there <laughs> and then stood up, and it was so funny because Miss Cook. She was like, "What are you doing?" And it was it was funny, but I mean, I I didn't mess up during the actual ceremony. Oh, that's cause, good. Because I wanted, I mean, like I thought it'd be funny. Yeah. But I wanted it to be serious. Like I actually remember when I graduated, some random guy I didn't even know goes, "Yeah." <laughs> Dude, like, that drives me nuts, though. Like, well, I'm not even your kid. Why are you I, clapping? I remember. I bet it was Hub. <laughs> like, no, he wasn't. Like, he, he was actually very calm. He just sat there. I, I hated it, though, because, like, some people, whenever, like, they get their names called, some motherfucker out in the crowd would always have to yell. Yeah. And it's just like, why? Like, why, like, why are you going to ruin it 
for everyone else. Like, it's kind of weird, because, like, back in May, mm-hmm. I went to my uh, my girlfriend's college graduation, because she mm-hmm. graduated to become a massage therapist. All right. Uh, I was there, and I, was, I wasn't expecting to clap. Like, because they're calling names, and I'm people, and I'm like, why the fuck are they clapping? Mm-hmm. This is a graduation. Calm down. And then I realized, oh, this is a college graduation. You can do whatever you want to. Yeah. It's different. Yeah, it's a different feel. High school, though, it's very... You, you know what you're supposed to do, because... Yeah. Well, I don't know. Some of those people in the crowd probably didn't graduate from high school. Well, but some, some of the people in there probably didn't even know what they were doing. You're right. <laughs> you're, you're very right. Uh, like, uh, did, did you cry at all? No. Because uh, whenever I was graduating, my, the principal, he, uh, he almost made me cry. Because uh, me, me and a friend of mine, Steven, we always dress up as movie characters and go to football games. We, we dress up as Jay and Silent Bob. Yep. He was Jay because he had he was tall and had long, long blonde hair. I was Silent Bob because you know I look like Silent Bob anyway. Relatively, yeah. And so, so I would always bring like a whiteboard that said, "Can we get a woo?" Yeah. And every time we'd walk up to him, we're like, "Mr. Gibbs, can we get a woo?" And then he'd be like, "Woo." And then, and then like whenever I graduated uh, last year, he shook when I shook when I went to go shake his hand. He looked me dead in the eyes and goes, "Can I get one final woo?" And like it brought chills up me. I was, I, was, I was I was like, this man's about to make me cry in front Damn. of everyone. That almost put that put tears in my eyes. Look, you can see him. I can. You can see him. <laughs> man, the one thing I will talk about is Madeline, Madeline Robinson, our class president. Whenever yeah. she gave her speech, she talked. She kind of gave you a run through of the past year. Yeah. Talking about football and just yeah. like the winter and. That got to me, especially the mm-hmm. football thing, and like, cause like I mean I only played one year, you know, you know, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And probably most people on here will know that. Yeah, I only played my freshman year, but it just I loved it, man, mm-hmm. and it, it meant a lot to me. Yeah, and I don't know, man. I I still get goosebumps thinking about it. Yeah, uh, you also ran for class senior senior class president, <laughs> didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Because <laughs> because you had that one post, and yeah. I loved it. <laughs> the pets one. Yes. <laughs> what did it say? Forgot what it um, said. It was, I can't remember. It like, was something along the lines of like, "Do you like pets?" <laughs> James likes pets. Yes. Vote for an animal lover. Yeah. Vote for James McDowell. I loved that. I loved like, that one. You know, I, I went into it. You know, because you ran too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I feel like yeah. You know, I remembered what you had told me, and you wanted to see if you could win, and you wanted to see how many votes you could get, yeah. and that's that's exactly what I went for too. Yeah. Because. I really didn't care. Uh, did, did you come in second place? You said you I came in second. Yes, right, I did, but I, I lost by a landslide. Matto fucking murdered me. But like, um, I mean, and like, and when I ran, uh, I was told that I lost by six votes, and and, I, and the teacher also told me that it was the closest in Freddie Ford history. That's awesome. Yeah, there was a lot of people that ran. My, there, my, there was only four people who ran with me. It there was, was seven. It was me, Maggie Marshall, uh, John Paul Cody, which he came dead last. Cause he, cause he, cause he overpromoted. He overpromoted, and then we had Justin Lowe, which he came in third. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he did, he didn't promote enough. Yeah. <laughs> he like one poster See, on like every other hallway. My thing is like, I didn't promote very much either. I had my posters, and that was it. Yeah. Cause like you know I didn't, and like in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't win. Yeah, I'm the same. Because way. Madeline did a great job as class president, and I wouldn't. Yeah. I. I would have been the shittiest one possible. Like the only, I wouldn't have put time to anything. I'm sorry. The only reason I wanted to be president was just so I could do the speech at the end at graduation. That's see, the only reason I wanted to do it. I could have done a speech, but yeah. I chose not to. And people people told me, they were like, well, you should talk, man. Because you're a pretty good talker. But I, I think, I don't think I am a good talker, first of all. Yeah. And I, I just don't. I don't like crowds, and I didn't want to put the spotlight on myself. Yeah, you know, oh. it, 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 I'm glad that it went to who it went to because they yeah. all did deserve their speeches and their time. And you know, I was just, I was just glad to be there. Yeah, to tell you the truth. Um, like I, it was it's kind of weird when I when I ran when I ran. We were, they told you you're not allowed to hand out food, but I, I guess candy was the exception because like the people handed out candy. I never handed out anything. I was I just I just went and talked to people. I just shook people's hands. I was like, hey, how you doing, buddy? Vote for me. What I went for... Um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. But one of the things that I went for was I went for the kids that were, like, different. Yeah. I didn't go for the kids that were, like, 
You know, like, mm-hmm. there's the popular kids and stuff, and then there's jocks and shit. And, like, you know, I just, I figured maybe if I could win enough of the middle ground over. Yeah. That I could win. And, like, I yeah. feel like a lot of the middle ground was mine, but it's just, another thing is, not that many people voted to begin with. Yeah. Like, not even half our class voted. And that's what wow. drives me nuts. Wow. Because, like, if, I mean, like, I don't think, I, I don't know if I would have won or not. I probably wouldn't have, but, I mean, I wish, everyone had the chance to vote, and I wish they would have. Actually, you did have, did you not vote for yourself? Because I voted for myself. I'm pretty sure, sh- I don't know if I did or not. Because they let me vote, and I was like, I'm voting for I'm myself. I'm pretty sure I did vote for myself. <laughs> but a lot of yeah. kids just didn't vote at all. Yeah. Um, like, I only only made six posters, because cause I, I, I knew I didn't want to over, over, over uh, promote myself. And I also didn't want to under promote myself, right. so I put I put one on, because like four we have like eight hallways, we have like eight. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, and and six of those are very popular. So I made I knew I made six, and I put one on each popular hall. You see, yeah. and during our thing though, we can only use four. Oh. That's why I only have I had one on the business hall, one yeah. on the main hall, one at the cafeteria. I had one. I had one at the cafeteria. And then I had one other one. Oh, I had one down there at the English. Like one. I actually remember one. I, I I had one that had the uh, the SpongeBob uh, beautiful Squidward on there. Yeah, I do you remember that? Yeah, it, it, and it had an American Eagle with with a flag on it. <laughs> you just put the most random crap. Yeah, you could, like you could think of. like I actually remember it 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 it, uh, it had it had let's make America beautiful. Vote for Dylan Nail. That's that's good. And hashtag Nail twenty fourteen. Dude, the Nail <laughs> thing was. The Cause what, like I have the best last name ever. It's what like I so tried easy. to do was, I tried the whole, you know, the pet thing. Cause I was yeah. like, well, that's that's pretty funny. Yeah. Cause it was covered in animal stickers, dude. Yeah. I'm like, come on. <laughs> and then I had like, uh, I only had one other good one. The other two were kind of lame, but the one that I had that was like, uh, vote for a real American. Yeah, <laughs> it I said, that What's more American than baseball? Our apple pie, and then in the middle it said James McDowell. Yeah, I remember that. And I had two I flags that. crossing, bro. It was it was awesome. I actually remember that. I do remember that one. And there's another one I remember. I I had a picture of Will Smith and Carlton Banks, and it said "Stay Fresh, Vote for Nail." That's awesome, man. <laughs> it's awesome. And like 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 when I, whenever I ran, my target was to aim for the theater kids, right, and the chorus kids, and the band. That's good. So that's kind of where I went, and then see my thing was and then ROTC kicked my ass. Cause yeah. Those guys, if you're an ROTC and you're running for president, you definitely you have a good shot of winning. You have a good shot of winning. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But it's whatever. I hold no, I hold no bad blood about it. I mean, I don't either. Like I was just more surprised that I came in second. Me too. I thought I was gonna come dead last. <laughs> Me too. Like at least I wasn't John Paul Cody. Uh, <laughs> if you're if you're listening, which I seriously doubt you are, John Paul. I'm glad you came in last. Uh, now, uh, l- last year, me and you, uh, and two others played fantasy football. Right. Now, I kind of got the idea from that, from the a TV show called The League. Yep. And h- how did you feel playing, playing fantasy football last year? Well, I'm going to be completely honest with you. First four weeks, I went 4-0. Yep. And that was fucking awesome. Yeah, I remember that. And then I went on to lose about every game <laughs> for the rest <laughs> of the series. So, at first it was fun. Uh, but, you know, it, I mean, it kind of got old. Yeah. It got old now. Like around week eight. And I just got... Like, it was fun up to week eight and it just kind of died. And, like, I I mean, I'll tell you the truth. Like, I cared more about just my team. My, they know the Panthers. Yeah. And I'm sure like you cared more about the Bengals than your fucking fantasy team. Because it's not like yeah. we put money into it or anything. Yeah. It's just for fun. And it was fun. It was something to do. And I'd love to do it again Yeah. this season coming up. But, you know, it's whatever. Hey, if, if anyone out there wants to do a fantasy football league with me and James, we're open. Just just shoot us just shoot us some emails. On the NFL app, though. Only on the NFL. Because that I have that shit on my phone. <laughs> yeah, and they don't charge you. They don't charge you anything. Unless unless you want to be charged. Unless maybe. you want to be charged, but nobody wants to be charged. No, nobody wants all that. Um, now you now you played sports. You yep. said you know, you played football and track. I yep. mean, I also did track with you. I had a, I did two years of track and one year of yep. football. I also did. I, I 
I I did football my freshman year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. then something happened, and I was like, mm, I want to be the manager. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the manager, and then I'll, I won't do it at all. I'll essentially be the water boy, but still look cool. <laughs> I still get to still get to wear the number zero on a jersey. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you actually—I mean, I did play in a couple games. Well, actually, I only played three times. I only played once. And like, I'm gonna be honest with you guys out there in the podcast world, I sucked ass at football. I did too. But you know, like, I didn't—I didn't have a initiative to try after. We got we were a few games in and like or a few weeks in actually and like I never practiced at my position. We we had Scout O and Scout D, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And Scout D No, Scout O is where I played. Scout O is where Coach Harper would have the plays of the other team. And he'd show us their plays and he yeah. and he'd tell you where to go. And that's the only thing I ever did. Oh. I never practiced our plays. I never did anything, and I, I think it's because I, I was just bad, and they weren't planning on putting me in the game, and I realized that very quickly, that I wasn't going to play. Yeah, I only played in one game, and it was against West Lincoln. I played in three, oh, so I got you beat on that one. You beat by two. I played, um, <laughs> I played against Bunker Hill, I believe. We won that game, of course. Yeah. I played against Patton, and I played against, I played on senior night against St. Stephen's. And, uh, how was senior night actually? Senior night was the best night of football. Go on. That ever happened. You see, like, first off, you know, like, I, I have a big ego, and I've I've never been one to lie and say I don't have one. But so, I. So you're kind of like a Kanye West over here. Pretty much, but I'm not that bad. No one will ever be that bad. <laughs> but um. Except for Kanye. Except for Kanye. My thing is, I, I really just, I was nervous because you know senior night they always call the seniors names. Yeah. And like they always have you out there with your family. Yeah. And they'll call your names and you'll walk up the fifty yard line, and you know like some people and I you know I'm McDowell so I'm I'm actually number ninety nine that was my number, so I was the very last one to get called. Yeah. And that's nervous enough because, you know, the last. Yeah. So I'm very distraught, very nervous. I'm with my mom and dad. And I'm just, I just want them to cheer for me. You know? Yeah. Because, like, that mattered to me. Because my ego. So my name gets called and, like, they cheer. They cheer for me. I'm like, me, James McDowell, the fucking nerd that I was my freshman year. (laughs) How the hell did I get here? Yeah. And that's, that's what I love. And then... That wasn't even the best part. They cheer for me. It's not that loud, but it was enough. It was yeah. enough to be like, yes, they I, got I me. I did it. And then you get back in the locker room, and I remember we'd always we'd always put our helmets on, and Coach Harper would come in there. Coach Price, his hype speeches are second to none. They yeah, are no, the best thing they ever. They are. They really are. Now, he would come in there and always do those, and then we'd get in there, we'd sit down in the weight room, and we'd put our helmets on. Coach Harper would come talk to us a little bit, and he'd turn the lights off. And they'd play Inner Sandman by Metallica. And that was our mm-hmm. hype song, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, I really don't like that song, man, but every time I hear it now, I see Helmet Vision, bro, and I just, I go back. And it's the greatest feeling ever. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so, you know, we do that, and I'm just thinking, I'm like, man, this is the last time I'll ever get to play here. You know, and it's just, it was, it was like, I can't imagine how people felt that played football all their, all their lives, you know, all the time in high school. And they knew this was it. Well, it wasn't when we had, we had one more game, but this is the last home game we ever had. Yeah. So I remember just, we get out there and you know, we're all, we're all in line and stuff and you're with your boys. I don't remember who I was lined up beside. It was, it was either, it was usually Jamin Howard and he was a junior or this guy named Bryce Houston. They're both juniors. They're both really good guys. Good friends with them. We became really close over football. And um, I remember just telling them, I was just like, man, we got to enjoy this. I was like, I have to enjoy this. I can't. I have to really soak this in because this is it, man. Yeah. This is it. And we'd always walk out to Hell's Bells by ACDC. 
Yeah, that was the same thing with the, when, I, when I was the announcer for uh, for the basketball team. Yeah. The, the, that was a song they they played too. We hear. So you hear the gong, you know. Yeah. And then you, you you start walking up the steps, man. And I remember once again my ego. I'd always have to be on the inside near the people, so they'd be like hitting my. Hitting me and shit and like <laughs> getting in my face like yes, yeah, and like you know because it's nothing like it, man. It's nothing there like it. it. And so like I just remember looking up and I see, you know where where the announcer is up top in the box. Yeah, yeah. And it's a starry night, which is weird. So you can see the stars, and it's just like I'll never forget looking up and all these people. I don't remember the people's faces, but you know you remember <laughs> them there. And you see the box and you see Tiger Stadium. Just that was it, man. Yeah. I, I knew, you know. I don't know. It was just perfect. And then you know, you run through the crowd of people, and you stand there, and your heart's beating so fast because, like, you just, you just, you, you're fucking so pumped up. And then you, you rip through the thing. You guys run out there, and this I'm just talking about. I'm talking about this in general, but this happened on senior night too, except for the looking up thing and remembering it so vividly I still think about it almost every day it's just really weird <laughs> but it's whatever <laughs> but um so we get out there and it's it's the fourth quarter yeah so skip through the whole game we're, we've win it we've done a great job we know it's over we're gonna end the season six and five which is fucking crazy considering that we lost like the year before zero and eleven yeah so, you know, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, this is senior night. I want to play. I want to play. So, eventually, I tell one of my friends, because I'm kind of, I was kind of a pussy, because I was always kind of afraid to talk to Coach Harper yeah. whenever it came during the games, because I didn't want to get yelled at or anything. Which, not saying that he would, but, you know, that's just me. So, I don't say anything, I don't say anything. I say something to my friends. And they're like, Coach Price, James hasn't gotten in yet. And I'm like, yeah, I haven't gotten in. So they stop the clock. They're like, oh, shit, we got to put James in there. Got to put James in there. And here's another thing. I practiced on offense, right? Yeah, yeah. But during games, I played defense because my number was a defensive lineman jersey. Mm-hmm. So I always had to play defense, which sucked because I played offense, and I liked offense. And they tell me, you're going to play left guard. Greatest feeling in my life, being told, you're going to get out there and play where you've been playing this whole time. <laughs> like, finally. So, oh, shit. I for, I left out the best part. I left out the best part. All right. Go ahead, go ahead, man. So I'm going to have to go back a little bit. All right. No problem. So whenever my friend tells Coach Price. Before that, you hear in the crowd. Like, you hear the crowd going. Just very, very quietly at first, and it just builds and builds and builds. We want James. We want James. We want James. We want James. I'm pretty sure I looked at I think it was DC. And I was like, are they calling for me? And he was like, yeah, dude, they're calling for you. And I was like, what? Me? Really? <laughs> Fucking me? Why? This is crazy, man. And so, like, I remember, I remember they called me out there, and the announcer says my name over the fucking thing. Like, coming out, number 99, James McDowell. And the crowd goes fucking crazy, dude. It's like, you know, it's like maybe like 300 people. Just like, Aah! and I'm just like, Aah! running out there. And I remember, like, we almost get a touchdown off my block and shit, man. It was awesome. Best night ever. I cried, man. I would have too if I was there. I, if I was in position, I would have. I remember, like I, I think it was. There was I remember a- I, I asked Christian Whitmore that day because he, he was number forty two and he was a defensive end and he'd always carry out the flag because he was like, he was like one of the captains. I don't care what anybody says. He was one of the leaders of our group, of our team, and um, you know he always carried out a flag. And I remember asking him, I was like, man, if we win, can I, can I carry out the flag or can I wave the flag? And he said, yeah. So like, I'll never forget, man. He gave me that fucking flag, and I ran up to the thing, and I was just, and everybody was cheering, bro, and I was waving that flag. It was crazy. Absolutely crazy. And, like, it's just, like, you're, you know, like, I talk about football a lot, and, like, I reminisce about it like I played it all my life. Yeah. And some people probably don't like the way I do talk about it, but, man, like, 
whenever you've always been the guy that didn't, you know, it just wasn't that. And yeah. It, it's just full circle, man. Yeah, I was the same way whenever, whenever, uh, my senior year, whenever, I, the, only, the only sport I played was track my senior year. Yeah. But, uh, whenever, whenever one of the principals, uh, I think it was Coach, I think it was Bliss, uh, he asked me if I would, uh, if I would be the announcer for the, uh, for the varsity bas- for the uh, basketball team. And then I was, I was kind of thinking, like, uh, like out of, out of all the people, he picked the guy with the stutter. Yeah. And, like, like, he gave me, he gave me the schedule. And the entire time I was I was sitting there thinking on my way there I was sit, I was thinking I was, I was, I was my my mind was crazy I was, I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck this up mm-hmm. like I'm going to fuck every name up yeah. I mean that's how I think too like because because like like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna like botch every name I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna be, I'm gonna be stuttering through everyone's name and then and then uh, Mr. Windmiller he he circled uh, no Mr. Coach Bliss he circled the names of all the starters who the only four names I had to call. For the starting lineup. You mean for only five? Five, yeah, I'm sorry. The only five names. My bad. And then, and then when uh, they started playing Hail Bells, Mr. Windmiller, uh, Windmiller was like, after the, after, the, after the last bell, that's when you start. I was like, all right, all right I got this. And then, and then like, I, I watched a lot of WWE to practice. I probably should have watched actual basketball. To, probably. To probably study for, like, announcing. But no, I, I, I watched Justin Roberts. <laughs> Justin <laughs> From WWE, and, and like the entire time, I'm just pulling out my 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 Justin Roberts. Your inner Justin Roberts. My inner Justin out. Roberts. I'm like, welcome. <laughs> like, it was amazing, you know. And, yeah. and I then mean, uh, I feel you, man. Like a couple of days, oh, but actually a couple weeks ago, I think it was whenever Poultry Guys came out. I was uh, I was an usher that night at my job. I work at Carmike Cinemas. I was I was working there, and. uh and one of the guys, we were, wait, we were waiting on a drop, and then I look at him, I was like, have you ever noticed that how all baseball announcers always sound the same? Like, welcome to Ballpark Fields. And then the entire time, every time I talk to this guy, the rest of the night, I just talk to him in that voice. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. Indeed. And then, and then like, you know, I remember our last game Yeah. was at South Point down there mm-hmm. near Charlotte, and it was... <sighs> if I knew how I was gonna feel now, yeah, I would have enjoyed it more. But it was, I I, I took in senior night good though. You know, yeah, I was cold because it was cold as fuck, dude. It was like twenty degrees outside, <coughs> and like I was, and I hadn't fucking played, yet, of course, because it's a playoff game. Yeah, and it was just cold, man, <laughs> and I was ready for me to be done with football. Yeah, because I put I put five months of my life into that. Yeah, and and like. I gave everything I had to that team, and I, I miss it, man. I think about it every day, every day, and like I mean, I know it's something. It's not the best part. It's not gonna be like the peak of my life. Yeah, but it's definitely up there. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. one of my peaks. Yeah, um, um mine, mine was whenever uh, one of my peaks was was during when I was the announcer. I, I it was senior night. I got there. And then my mom could make it, but my dad made it. Yeah. Because cause I was it was his weekend, so I was like, Dad, will you go with me? He's like, Yeah. And then because it was supposed to be on a Friday, but like I think it iced a little bit, so they moved it to Saturday. Yeah. And then, so it was like senior afternoon, <laughs> essentially. But whenever I got there, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bliss is like, Hey, uh, can you fill out this piece of paper? I was I was like, For what? He was like, Wait, wait, we're gonna have you uh, go out there with the team. Be announced for senior. Hell yes! With the seniors. That's awesome. And I was, I was, I was like, what? He's like, yeah. And That's I was like, I was awesome. Like, I was like, oh god, I, I didn't know. Yeah. And then, and then like, like I, I didn't know that they were gonna have my dad come down either. And then I think that was like the one of the only times my dad realized like how how popular I was. I didn't even know I was popular because like I, I look like all four band members of Weezer just cluster fucked together. You do. You do. I do. <laughs> do they have a chubby one? <laughs> The drummer. The drummer's a little chubby. <laughs> that was a dick move. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, I mean, the, I mean, the drummer's a little big. But that was funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The drummer, but, but the drummer is also bald. So. Oh, no. <laughs> that's not you. <laughs> like he's double bald. He doesn't have a beard or a <laughs> Like he's just fucked both ways. <laughs> well, man, I but like, you know, and then I can move on to track if you yeah. if you want to talk about that. Um. Like I only had one year of experience, and the only thing I know is I 
sucked. Well, like the only track, the only away track me I got to go to, I had a concussion. The JV one, yeah, the JV. One. I had to go to it too. I had yeah. to go to it my senior year too. I didn't go to a single away meet. Yeah. And uh, dude, track sucked. I hated it. I mean, it was. I, I loved it junior year and yeah, like senior loved, year, man. Like. I enjoyed I, it when I when I did it. I was better at track than I was at football. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. But I, I hated it because I'm like I'm not trying to like talk shit about anybody or anything. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say was, this. Was it was because I wasn't there? No, it was okay. because <laughs> I felt like our coaches were more focused on people that they thought would win. And yeah. like, you know, my junior year and your senior year, it wasn't that bad. Hmm. You know, because our coaches. Yeah. Would put time into everyone. Yeah. But my and, senior year, and, and the, only, the only thing is, they only had two coaches. They only had two. My senior year, they did not. I had no. I had no time put into me. I did not matter. Oh. My last day of track, I sat on the grass the entire time. Didn't throw a discus once. Hmm. I mean, like wow. it, it makes me sick. Wow. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the only the only away track me I got to go to had a concussion. You were. Cause like the night before, I was at I was at a play practice, and then I was leaning on the wall, and then my arm just kind of like did something weird, and I just smashed my face into the wall. I didn't end crack the wall, and then we're dancing, and then my and then uh, this guy Martin he elbows me in the face, so it made it worse. And then the next day, I tell Price, and Price is like, he's like, do you think you're still okay to go? I was like, I should be. He's like, all right, man, I'll take your word for it. On our way there, he slams on the brakes, my face. Just goes right into the back of the seat. Because we were sitting together. Yeah, yeah and, then he, and he had to turn around like, hey, hey you all right, man? You all right? <laughs> like, oh, man, that was that was an adventure. But you also did theater, too, right? I did. Yeah. I did uh, play production. Well, technically, I was in theater the entire time I was in high school. Yeah, that was, I, too. I was in theater my freshman year, all the way through senior year, and then I also did play production senior year, so I had, I had theater all year round. And I'm just yeah. gonna I'm gonna plug something real quick, Miss Blake. I miss you a lot, and, oh. I, and I I'm very heartbroken to find out that you left Ford. Like I'm 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 also heartbroken, but I'm also kind of happy that that she's because she's she's moving because to, like, to be yeah, closer I, with her kids. I know, and like so. I, I understand that and that yeah. makes me happy for yeah. her. But like I'm sorry, but I'm selfish, and I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> like I'm I'm also gonna miss miss the, miss her being there too, even though I've been out of school for two years. I'm still gonna miss you. I'm still gonna miss going to Ford and being and seeing yeah. her there. It's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Anyway, but, but uh, I was I was in theater one year, my freshman year, yeah. and then all through the end I did play production, except for my senior year, where I also went back into theater one just 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 for the fun of it. It's so much fun. <laughs> theater one was the. I took it four times <laughs> in high school, guys. Dude, I took it every year. I was put, I was in your class and. God, me, you, Cece, and Moon Moon. We were Austin the, Hughes and Logan. Don't forget Logan. Oh, yeah, that, that weird Logan. The kid. redneck kid. We <laughs> were the most destructive group ever. It was so much fun. And yeah. honestly, like, like Cece and Austin weren't even that destructive. Yeah. It was me, you, and Logan. We <laughs> went back into the back of the theater room one day, <laughs> and we took like hangers and old shoes and threw them up into the roof of the school <laughs> because there's a wide hole open. And I'm, I'm ratting on us. And that, Logan, if somehow you hear this, man, I'm sorry. But that one day you also kicked the ball up onto the roof. I did. And then, did, who kicked it? Somebody kicked it onto the gym roof. That was that was awesome. No, that's that okay. Was, that was Moon Moon. That was awesome. And I, yeah. I mean, uh, that I one think, time That one time he brought his cat with him to school. That was cool. <laughs> I think about four out of the five times I was in theater, we had somebody have to get up on the roof to get something. <laughs> like... That that one day we had that one that one uh, substitute teacher, God, she was so mean. And me and me and Christian, we we snuck around to the back room. We were putting on dresses. You guys put on dresses and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> Cause like, like we peek out. You know, whenever I, would laugh. whenever I think back on that class, that one. That was one of the most fun. That one was fun, but you see, like the only one time that I had theater that I didn't really like it. Was my sophomore year. What was that? Because, man, like, the people in there just... There weren't enough people that I got along with, I guess. Oh. Because, like, I sat there and I talked to the, the bad... The, one of the coolest people I've ever met, Seth Wright. 
Now, it was me and him, and, you know, like, Seth Wright, though, you know, he's a really cool guy. There's a lot of, a lot of high demand for some Seth Wright, you know, so yeah. he talked to a lot of people, and I was kind of just his fucking sidekick, honestly, because I didn't <laughs> have anybody to talk to. And, like, I, I really liked Seth, you know, so I'd always talk to him, and I was just weird, man. I didn't talk to anybody else, hardly. Because, like, nobody ever wanted to talk to me. Oh. Nobody gave a damn about Jamie Dallas all more year. I don't blame him. I sucked ass. I mean, my freshman year, I was kind of in a weird group. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know what I'd call, like, my closest group of friends. We call ourselves the Wolfpack, though. Holla. Holla to the Wolfpack. I regret hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Love you guys. Mama Dan, Rodney, Austin, Big Oh, oh Mama Dan was in that group? Mama Dan was in the Wolfpack. Mama Dan. He's Dude. probably one of the coolest people I've ever met, it's too. Kind of, it's kind of weird, because his brother, Papa West, was in my group. Oh, God. <laughs> We didn't have a name because we're cooler than that. No. <laughs> the, the wolf pack, that's pretty cool. Come on. Okay. We even did it. Too sweet. Okay. Come on. So you basically just kind of copied everything Zach Galifianakis didn't hang over one? With this. <laughs> Ooh. So we copied, we copied WCW and the hangover, pretty much. Nobody else knew that this was a wrestling thing, though. So, like, yeah, all my friends, fans, all my friends fans. except for, like, Mama Dan. Mama Dan found out that this was NWO. But, like, everybody else thought that I was just original as fuck. And it's pretty funny, I think. <laughs> because, like, I totally ripped off wrestling. Hulk Hogan's gonna come. Hulk Hogan's gonna crash through your bedroom and murder you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brother. Brother, he's gonna hit me with a leg drop. You know, he's, gonna, he's gonna hit you with a million brothers. <laughs> <laughs> brother, 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 brother. <laughs> he's, he's gonna say brother so much your head is gonna fucking explode. Yeah. Well, but, um, like, I, I get back to theater, though. I had a great time. In it, and uh, we did, I did Millie, the spring production. It was probably one of the best experiences of my life. Just another thing that added to how good my senior year was. Yeah. Like my senior, my senior uh, play was uh, Back to the Eighties, but I was also in like the NCTC act as well. Yeah, which was student written. I didn't, I didn't do the NCTC thing. I um, wish I would have. Like I, I did it my first year when I was when I was in play production. My sophomore year, I did it, and we did like an anti bullying play. It was like thank you for flushing my head in the toilet or something like that. Sounds kind of gay. No, it was. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was a, it was it was a pretty cool play. Uh, and then and then uh, my and then we did. Uh, Cinderella that year, which, which I hate feet, and then they made me the footman. You, you were the footman, I but you to, did a good job. I you hate, grabbed those ankles well. I did. I came nowhere near their foot. I grabbed their leg. I grabbed their shin. I'm like, give me your shin. We're putting that. We're putting your foot in the shoe. In the shoe. I'm not grabbing your actual foot. And then, uh, and then. And then, then we like we also did like mini plays after that. We we did like Yellow Boat and then uh, another one and then uh, Charlie and Saga Factory, where where I was Augustus Gloop. When did you do that? Sophomore year. It was, it, we we did it after Cinderella because we had nothing going on. So we just like Miss Blake was like, let's just do like student stuff. You guys didn't put a lot into it, did you? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> like our Chocolate River was a really big ass piece of white fabric, dunked in like we we. I think it was me and some other one, some other person. We just kind of like got a like one of those weird bucket uh, bucket things. Yeah. Uh, what are they called? Tubs. That's what they're called. And we, and we we filled it with water and brown like wall paint, and then we just shoved it in there, and we took a plunger and we just kind of stirred it around, and it looked like Dookie. Yeah. It looked. Well, cool. the Chocolate River looks like Dookie too. Yeah, and, and, and we're not we're not and we're not talking about Green Day's first album called Dookie. We're actually talking about... You're wearing the Dookie shirt. I see the plug you had to, you had to put that I on. am. I, I feel like I had to say it because I was wearing the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I and, like it. And Green Day is one of my favorite bands. <laughs> but, uh... But yeah, like, it looked like... <laughs> it looked like shit. <laughs> like, it was... It was pretty bad. And then, like, my sophomore year, I did... Uh, what was the play we did on that one? Bye Bye Birdie. Dude, Bye Bye Birdie? <laughs> like, that was the first musical I ever had where I, where I had, a, like, a major role. It I was, was so good. I was nervous as hell, man. I loved Bye Bye like, Birdie, man. Tate, Tate killed it. Yeah. Tate killed and it. And then he did nothing after that. Yeah, it's all good. He was, he, uh, you know, he was a real, he was really good at pulling the curtain back in Millie. He probably was. I give him that. Because we almost. I'll never forget. Like, during back in the 80s, like, we almost just kicked him out. We're like, I'll Dude. never forget, though. One of these times. One of the, the very last night of Millie. This is the senior night, you know. Yeah, I was there for that one. And we, we are, you know, we were. She was introducing everybody. Yeah. 
and Tate, she called Tate's name, and he wasn't up there. Do you remember that? Yeah. And he came running around, and I, I'm right beside this Blake, you know, so I hear him go, I needed to poop. <laughs> 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 that's what he was doing. He had to go poop. <laughs> yeah, wow. Thank God he doesn't take poops like I do, because I wouldn't have like, made it. <laughs> like, uh, my senior year, we did, we did Back to the 80s, and then I was one of the cool kids in the play, which, me as a cool kid, I know, right? That's weird. It is weird, but uh, but it was, like, it was like the very first time I actually got to be with like the guy who actually kind of got me into theater, Eric Ample. I actually got to be like... A part of a part of the group he was in in, in in that play, so it was pretty cool. I got to work with him on my very last one, and so <laughs> the entire. I also got to work with him on Tiger Eye News as well. Which yeah. do they even do they even do that anymore? No, oh, fucking no, man. They they kind of did. Okay. Like every once in a while they do them. It was weird, man. It sucked. Because I do know the teacher that did it when I did it. He he wouldn't appreciate me saying his name, so I'm not going to say his name. But, That's why I haven't. I haven't been saying hardly anybody's name, man. I ain't trying to. But no, because like, cause, cause, cause the teacher we had during Tiger News, he is very like off the grid. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but but he he didn't want he did, he wouldn't want us, but he 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 would. He's a good guy. He's a great guy. He's a great teacher too. Uh, we, we had him, and then we we did this. We we for Christmas we did music videos. Yeah. And we we that basically was funny. We 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 took the last Christmas music video by Wham. <laughs> And then we redid it shot by shot, and then and then there like there was one time where we were supposed to be pretend talking, so we were just whispering around around a, around one of the lunch tables, and, and then and then like an inside joke between me and Eric was, I was like there's an elk in my and there's, there's an elk in my bedroom, right? And so like there's like some scenes in Baba and uh, and Back to the Eighties where like me and him were supposed to be talking in the back background, and then the entire time he's just telling me about this elk who was who got in his bedroom. It, it was locked in his closet, and I'm like, it got him pregnant. It was like the fucking, it was like the fucking weirdest story I've ever heard in my life. Hmm. But we just kept adding on to it. Like the goal was trying to make me laugh the entire time. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Good. Because like, good, cause like, seen, cause like the senior night, he just drove it home. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Well, um, and I don't, I don't, I don't even know if he even still talks to the elk. Honestly, I hope he does. I hope he does too. You know, I saw that guy the other day. I saw him too. I saw him at the movie theater. He I went saw, to go see Ted too. I saw him at El Sarape. Oh, but we didn't really talk because I don't really know him. But he's a great guy. I've never had a problem with him though, and I never will because I always thought he was really cool. He's he's a sweet guy. He's a nice guy. So that's all I gotta say though. So yeah. So, well, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned WCW earlier. With your weird group of friends and your hand sign there, you mentioned WCW. Uh, now they, I think they just had a 10, 10 or twenty year anniversary. Uh, I think I, I do believe it was a twenty year anniversary of WCW. Of WCW Monday Night Nitro. Yeah, with the NWO. Oh well, well here let me just get something off my chest real quick before you know on this whole podcast thing. Depending on whoever listens to it, I love wrestling. Most people don't know that that I'm honestly. Probably, I'd say... One of the biggest fans. Yeah. I'm probably a bigger fan than you are. Mm-hmm. And, like, people don't know that, but I... I love wrestling. And yeah, But I fucking love wrestling. <laughs> like, it's my favorite thing in the world. But, yeah, it is. it has been, though. Uh, 19 years ago, NWO Wolfpack. Yep. 19 years ago. Older than me. A year older than me. <gasps> About... Uh, no, no, it's same age It's like me. a month older than you, man. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a month. Because uh, it started in July and you're born what August. Oh yeah, you know? August. You know, I was actually a day late. I could have shared the birthday of Jack Black, but I get Michael Jackson. Oh, great! I know yeah, it could be worse. Well, I, I could share a birthday with Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, uh, my birthday. Twenty eight. Yeah. You know, how many years? Uh, about. Well, however many years before. Guess what? Took place on my birthday in the 60s. What? The WWE Championship was formed on my birthday. Oh. The very first champion was crowned. That's not fucking destiny. I don't know what is. I don't know. But, uh, uh well, since we're on the subject, who who is your favorite wrestler of all time? It could be current or past. Uh, who would you say is your favorite? 
Because I like if I was to pick off the top of my head, I would either pick. Well, well, well. Let's make it easier. Let's just say top five. Top five. Oh, top that's, five. You see, that's tough though because. Well, you know, like I, I like all wrestling. Yeah. You know that. You know, yeah. I, I branch out much, much past WWE. Way further than me. Oh, definitely. Fuck. I, <laughs> I, I love. Well, you see, like I love the old guys, of course. You know, so yeah. Savage, Savage is up there for sure. Macho Man, rest in peace. Yeah. And uh, Sting. Yeah. Sting's got to be up there somewhere. Um, and I mean, I'd honestly put Kevin Owens up there. Yeah. Because you know, Kevin Owens is relatively new to like if any of these people even watch WWE. But like, if um, you know, and I've known about him for. Probably about three years now. Yeah. And I've always seen him as the guy that I can relate to the most. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because he's a big guy. He doesn't He doesn't look like he's that athletic. And, I mean, he's a lot more athletic than I am, for sure. Yeah. So, he, he's, he's kind of like the new Dusty Rhodes. Relatively, yeah. But, like, yeah. you know, he'll Roll. never be booked like that. Yeah. Well, but, you know, he's peace, just... Dusty Rhodes. He's just, like... I don't know, man. He's just what I think. My, my current favorite wrestler is AJ Styles. Yeah. Because he is... Yeah, he's from TNA, right? Or he just recently left. He he left TNA at the beginning of last year, and he's in a he wrestles in Ring of Honor in New Japan yeah. right now, and uh, praying that he signs with WWE so we can watch him regularly. Uh, I really like him. That's what four. Yeah. Number five. Like, like, like while you're thinking on who your number five is, my top five would probably be. Like it's hard for me because I because I liked a whole bunch like I, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna like pick I, I'm not gonna pick like all attitude era. You can't. I mean, you can't. Because like because that because that doesn't make me mad. People are like attitude era is the best. Nah, ruthless aggression. Ruthless aggression is the best. That was the best. Two thousand late two thousand two and early two thousand three is the shit. Yeah. I do not care because yeah. they like, had... like, like up until like two thousand seven it was great. Yeah, because that like... was their peak. Whenever they first split off into the brands and stuff, man, yeah. they had they had the best wrestlers in the world. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says because they had guys, you know, they still had Stone Cold. Yeah. They're, okay, here, here's how I'm going to sum it up. There will never be another time where you can watch WWE and you regularly see Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, The Rock, Triple H, Jericho, Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker, Kane, Kane, Rob Van Dam, Booker T, Booker T, all these guys, all on two shows. Plus guys like you know, just like Lance Storm, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, great wrestlers, great underrated guys that were honestly, I'd say they were before their time because yeah. like if you know like Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, true they they had world title reigns and stuff, but yeah. now they'd be on the top of the company if they were ten years younger. 15 yeah. years younger for sure. Yeah. Because because now that's what's in demand. People love the, the guys, guys that can actually fucking get out there and like, like Daniel show Bryan. you something. Daniel Bryan. Oh, don't get me started on Daniel Bryan. Like, uh, well, here's my top five. Uh, um, sorry number, about that. Five, uh, Mick Foley. Oh, yeah. Because Mick Foley was kind of the Kevin, is like, was like the Kevin Steen of the Attitude Era. Yeah, he was. And, and Mick Foley, like, he took a lot of damage to his body. And I got to see him a year ago at the Hickory Comedy Zone, nicest guy you'll ever fucking meet in your life. The nicest guy I've ever met. And then I'd have I'd have to say Edge, that's number number four. Um, and then I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this, but but John Cena comes in a good three. Five moves of doom is what most people call him, but the good old John Cena. Super Cena. Super Cena. <laughs> Super Cena. And uh, number number two probably probably Triple H. Really? Yeah. Cause I've always I've always liked Triple H. Mm-hmm. I've always liked him more than I like Shawn Michaels. Oh yeah, I mean I don't really like Shawn Michaels. I mean I kind of I only like Shawn Michaels because my mom likes Shawn Michaels. I understand. My mom. And, likes and that was the same way. That was the same way with Stone Cold. I mean I, I don't get me wrong. Stone Cold's a good he's a good wrestler and all that, but you know, like I I, I, I if Stone if Stone Cold was if Mick Foley and Stone Cold came, let 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 let, let, let let's kind of say that Stone Cold's going to mid in high school to visit. And and it's like he's charging five dollars, and Mick Foley's paying like twenty bucks. I'd go see Mick Foley. Really? I'd yeah. see Stone Cold. Cause cause Mick Mick Foley was more of a more of like an idol to me. Mm-hmm. I always like cause uh, cause so like, Mick Foley's your Kevin Owens. Yeah, 
Yeah, because I've always liked McFoley. Like I, th- I, th- I think I think he gained my respect by not dying when he fought the Undertaker. And then my number one would have to be the Undertaker. Really? Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, that's crazy, man. Because like whenever we watched uh, Brock Lesnar break the streak, I. I was devastated. Was I, I almost I didn't want to cry in front of your brother. <laughs> That's why I didn't cry. That was, I was devastating. Like, that was devastating. Because there's been a few times where I actually cried at wrestling. Like I, I cried when Ric Flair retired. Edge's retirement speech. Edge, oh god. I cried so I cried a lot, dude. Yes. I cried when Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Guerrero died. Eddie his tribute show. I even cried at Chris Benoit's tribute I show. I cried when Chris Benoit died too. Be- before we found out what he did. Who? What else have I cried? I've cried. I I cried a little whenever. Whenever I watched Dusty Rhodes tribute, they did Dude, that the, Money in the Bank. I, it it it, it, it hit me. It tugged on the heartstrings. Yeah, and like 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 one tear came out. And I was like, "Rest in peace, the American Dream." And it was like even now, I I still doubt they'll push Cody Rhodes. <laughs> they'll still they'll still won't push him. <laughs> Maybe he'll win the IC title again or something. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll we'll let you win a match over the Miz. <laughs> well, he beat uh, Adrian Neville last night. That's true. That's true. And I mean, Adrian Neville's getting a pretty good push right now. So he is. Well, that's, that's because Vince McMahon isn't running things anymore. I don't think. You're right. Because like, but I mean, he is though. It's yeah. just, it's he's just, just like he's not doing a lot of the booking anymore. Yeah, and like he sees that. Like, I think he's finally started to see that people actually care about wrestling again. Yeah. And like you know, he is. I think it's just been hard for him to transition. That people actually like how Triple H runs things. Because Triple H took... Because whenever Vince McMahon first came out with NXT, it was basically like a game show. It was a game show. It was a reality TV show. Like, kind of like, kinda like Tough Enough is tough now. Enough, yep. Yeah. Which Tough Enough this season... Is fucking stupid. It's basically Big Brother with wrestling, essentially. I don't like Tough Enough because it's just like... Because the, the winner... Most of these people... Aren't going to... Are going to get they haven't, anyways. They haven't earned it. And, like, I have a huge beef with that. Like, yeah. people... And, like, you're right. You know, who am I to say that they haven't earned it? But my opinion is, like, yeah. and, people and people like Kevin Owens or Neville or Cesaro, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Prince Devitt, I mean, Finn Balor, Hideo Itami, I could keep listing guys that are on the roster now that they have traveled the world for yeah. 10, 15 years fought their asses off because they loved wrestling. Not somebody like, I'm just going to call a random name, I thought of Big E. Big E Langston. Yeah. Because. They, well, they're the bodybuilder. He was a bodybuilder. And so he decided. It's kind of the same thing with John Cena too. You know, or a football player. And like these guys, they were just like, well, I haven't made it in football. Let's try wrestling. And that's not right. And WWE will just see this big guy. And they're yeah. like, well, let's hire him and give him a shot. I mean, and, like, you know, just because they're big and look good shouldn't mean anything. I think the only person who kind of got away from that was The Rock. Because whenever he came in, he wasn't a big guy. He wasn't. He was He was a small dude. But then there, but then here's another beef of mine, though. And his, like, his every, family. Yeah. He's, he's a member of the Anawahi tribe. Yeah. Which is the Usos and Rikishi. Roman Reigns. The Rock. Fuck stick Roman Reigns. <laughs> And then it's just but, like, and like, I'm not saying that they don't just, work hard, yeah. but it's just like they haven't worked nearly as hard. And you'll never convince me that they deserve it more. Well, the users have been trying. They they have been trying. I know, but they get they pretty much automatically got signed to a contract by WWE. Yeah, we'll you start with the Rock, but the Rock's really the only one that actually tried. They all tried. I mean, I, mean, like, like, I can't like, I can't stress enough that like. And you know like they're they're good wrestlers. The Usos are good wrestlers. The Rock's a good wrestler. Roman Reigns is trying really hard to become a good wrestler. He, I mean, the best one that you named, the one who has great mic work, The Rock. The Rock. Second, he's probably one of the best talkers ever. Yeah, behind Stone Cold. Well, no, probably above. He's better than Stone Cold. Yeah, Chris Jericho him might be a little better. Him and Jericho are up there together. Because <laughs> dude, Jericho's promos from like ten years ago. I love Chris are Jericho. Awesome. And, th- and then like like. Uh, a guy who would come in at a good in my top ten, he'd probably come pretty. He'd pretty be like around number nine. It would be CM Punk. Oh yeah, CM Punk's a good talker, because and he's like, a good wrestler too. Yeah, like 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 whenever he dropped that first pipe bomb, the one where he whenever he he first left the company back in like 2011, back back when he did that, 
it was unscripted. Yeah. Which which is rare when it comes to wrestling. Because they just gave him the mic. And yeah, they like, like, talk. Gig, uh, like, because I watched the documentary. Uh, they, the, they, the, the, the they, punk best in the world one. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 handed, they handed the mic. They, they told him to tell him to go, go out there and say your final goodbyes. Mm-hmm. And he just unleashed. <laughs> yeah, he did. He basically, he basically. They told him to go out there and they told him to talk, talk about your problems. Yeah. And he did. Yeah, and then, you know what would have been awesome? And they shut the mic off on him. I know that they would have never let, let this happen because WWE refuses to recognize yeah. other promotions and shit. But what if he would have gone off to like Ring of Honor in New Japan and carry the WWE championship and had the WWE title oh there too? And, and like, let's just make it to where WWE doesn't have a world champion, like a WWE champion for like you know six months or something, and then just like. Bring him back finally. That would have been fucking crazy. That would have been. Just imagine a world where we got to watch CM Punk in Ring of Honor as the been. WWE champion. That would have been pretty cool. And, like, you know, I saw this. I'm, this is, I'm kind of copying another guy's idea because I saw somebody talk about this on YouTube before, so I'm just going to throw that out there. That, that's not my original idea. Yeah. But once I heard about it, it's stuck in my mind, and I yeah. wish that somebody would go back and change that shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, Give like- me- Something else. Well, a lot of WWE they 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 usually try at WrestleMania they try to get different mu- musicians to come in, and I've I know they have Motorhead play live, they've had uh, Living Color they've, they've played live, they had POD play live, Kid Rock. They had Kid. POD play. Yeah, they played at WrestleMania twenty two for Rey Mysterio. Huh. And they had uh, they've also had Kid Rock there a couple times. Rev Theory. They had them for yeah. Randy Orton. And they had John uh, John Legend come sing sing uh, America the Beautiful, and and they've also had P Diddy and yeah and MGK yeah because that uh, John Cena versus oh and Florida yeah, remember Florida. John Cena versus The Rock yeah they had Florida that was cool man yeah I like that and, and and they also like try to pick music that's popular to like put in promos like like the one that surprised me the most was when John Cena fought Bray Wyatt and they used Legacy, Legacy. by Eminem. That threw me off. Why, though? Why did Eminem not play at WrestleMania 30? Do you know how fucking awesome that would have been? Dude, that would have been monumental. I would have... Oh, my God. <laughs> I would have uh, freaked out. But, but like, who, who would you like to see perform at, like, Super... And, and Super Bowl, they get, they get people, like... They don't. They don't get really good artists. See, like, but they get artists. Uh, well, like they they always get really mainstream artists too. Yeah. But I'm just gonna throw this out there too. I'm gonna go off subject a little bit and shoot from the hip. Mainstream music pisses me the fuck off. It does. I like a lot of it, and a lot of it's catchy, and a lot of it it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. But have you noticed that it's like centered towards girls? Yeah. And like that drives me crazy. Yeah. My my thing is that that I I hate. That, that they use auto tune, cause mm. cause I'm a Dave Grohl fan through and through, mm. like like th- their best album in my opinion, Wasting Light, because they recorded it in Dave Grohl's garage, they recorded it in his fucking garage, mm. and then and then whenever whenever they got th- whenever they won the Grammy, Dave Grohl just just slapped just slapped every auto tunist in the face, because yeah. <laughs> cause, cause, cause he went up there and said and said music doesn't have to be made on a computer. Yeah. This album here was made in my garage. And I fucking respect Dave Grohl. Because, man, like, they're one of the few bands that actually have. Yeah. Well, not one of the few bands, but they're one of the few, like, main artists. Because main, I would consider them mainstream rock. Yeah. Would, would you? I mean, winning a fucking Grammy, that's mainstream. I mean, they have, I think they've won a Grammy for every album they've made except yeah. for uh, uh, In Your Honor. Mm, in Your Honor is the only one they didn't like win for. Anyway, yeah. but, like, you know, and, like, they don't have to be, and like a yeah. lot of a lot of musicians do have talent, but yeah. it's like it's just like they're lazy, man. That's yeah. what it, they're lazy. Yeah. And um, like Katy Perry and yeah, they, I mean she she has she did good at the Super Bowl. She really did. And when Lenny Kravitz came on, that was pretty cool. That was a, that was a really good clash. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would like when, when, whenever they said Katy Perry special guest Lenny Kravitz, I'm like, that's not gonna do too well. I didn't think Bruno Mars did that great. I didn't think the Red Hot Chili Peppers did that great either. Um, but like it was a combination that they thought would look. It was it was one of those that would look good on paper. Yeah. But I was excited to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers because yeah. it kind of fills it out after 2012. After they got nominated, into, after they got inducted into the Hall of Fame, they kind of like fizzled out. Yeah. And I was like, oh, they're Hot Chili Peppers. But like the reason it didn't work out well is because that they didn't have enough time to actually plug in every instrument. Mm-hmm. So like they just played a soundtrack. Yeah. You know what sucks though. The worst Super Bowl 
performance I've ever seen. What What do you think it is? Black Eyed Peas. The Black Eyed Peas. I mean, it, it was, and like it hurts for me because I used to be a huge Black Eyed Peas fan. Yeah, I love them on. I love them when I listen yeah. to them on the radio. They yeah. sound awesome. Yeah. But live, they were god awful. They were the only the only exciting part was whenever Slash came out, and then even that it was it wasn't, it wasn't even that exciting. Wasn't even that great. I was like, oh, it's a Slash. It was just Slash, and uh, and like. And there's some artists who I love, and I would love to see on the Super Bowl, and they're never going to get them on. No. Like Foo Fighters, they deserve to be there, but they're never going to get the Foo Fighters. And like I feel like WrestleMania, I just wish, I wish they would have done Eminem. Yeah, because that would that would have been a whole lot of more fans that they would have got. And if they could work in like some of the artists I like, it'd be cool. Yeah. You know, I'm a big Machine Gun Kelly fan, and I was pretty stoked when he was on there. I'm I'm I I I don't really listen to him normally, but I have heard a couple songs. Uh, I really wish I, if they could figure out a way to put like Fall Out Boy on there. I yeah. think that'd be awesome. Well, they have used a couple of Fall Out Boy. Well, they songs. use some of their songs, so yeah. I don't see why it'd be so hard, like, to use them. I mean, they could use Immortals for WrestleMania 22. Yeah. I mean, 32. Why not? Yeah. You know, because like that's all they talk about WrestleMania immortality. Yeah. Granddaddy of them all. It is. And it's just like that. Easy, uh, but like uh, going speaking about music, who who like who is one of your favorite bands? Fall Out Boy, Fall Out Boy. Come out, mine's probably uh, a a close, a close, a very close tie between Linkin Park and Foo Fighters. You know, like I've changed mine a lot. Whenever yeah. I first started listening, you know, I've changed it a lot. Yeah, because I always change what I listen to. Yeah, you know, when I first started listening to music a lot, I like Linkin Park was definitely my favorite band. Yeah, and then it was the Foo Fighters, and then it was Blink One Eighty Two, and you know. And I'd, I'd say it's Fall Out Boy now because it's just who I listen to a lot right now. Like, I, I usually, cha- like, usually, like, I never, like, go out and change it every month. It just kind of happened for me. Every yeah. month I get a new favorite band. And, like, sometimes there's been bands that just repeat. Yeah. Because, like, because The Fray. Like, not many people expect me to go out and listen to The Fray. They're so good. Because, like, because I listen to, like, Foo Fighters, Slipknot, Linkin Park, and stuff like that. And then I'm like, you listen to The Fray? <laughs> what? And you know, like, uh, and they're one of they're one of my favorite. They're like they're definitely in my top ten. You know, I listen to I like uh, I like the Killers a lot. Yeah, that surprises me a little bit. That I like the Killers. No, the the like people would people wouldn't assume me knew to listen to the Killers. I like the Killers. And I like I like Panic at the Disco. Yeah. Um, they have a new song out. Did you know that? I did not. Okay. Yeah. We can listen to that later. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I said, Fall Out Boy. Um, I like the Bleachers. They're pretty good. Yeah, I thought they're gonna be at the Weenie Roast this God, year. I want to go to the Weenie Roast. Dude, the Weenie Roast is experience. I want to go so bad. Uh, and one and like I've always liked Weezer, which which some people Weezer is kind of like I remember. some people like them and some people don't. I remember. Um, whenever Beverly Hills was really popular, yeah. I was in like fourth grade, man. Yeah. I remember it always it always be on like TV. Yeah. Because like of that that's what I call music or whatever. It was yeah. Like one of those. That was like, you know, it's one of their best songs, but it's definitely not one of my favorites. Like, I have so many more songs of theirs that I love a whole have, lot more than Beverly Hills. They have a lot of complex else. music and stuff. Like, yeah. if, you really, if you really got into yeah. it and listened to them, I think m- probably my favorite song by them is Say It Ain't, Say it Ain't So. Yeah, one of mine is probably Perfect Situation. I've never heard that song before. It's a really great song. Uh, but, like, the, that album that came off of Make Believe, it also featured uh, Beverly Hills and, uh, and This Is Such a Pity. I think that was... Just like an album of just breakup songs, except for Beverly Hills. Because, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, listening to that album, I'm like, oh, this is a lot of breakup music. But, uh, but Linkin Park, that's basically their entire career. Oh, yeah. Dude, Dude Linkin Park. Like, if, like, Linkin Park is the band everyone goes to if they have a, if they have a breakup. Like, oh, I just broke up with somebody. <laughs> let's Linkin listen Park. To, let's listen to Shadow of the Day. <laughs> <laughs> let's just, let, let me just go get my Linkin Park collection. You know out. who else is a good band that I don't listen to a lot who? anymore, but I wish I still did? Seether. See their yeah, cause they have they like, they don't yeah. really make music good. They don't make their songs aren't as good now as they used to yeah. be. But man, like like they're uh, uh, remedy was pretty good. Remedy was a good song and like breakdown. Fake it, fake it was a freaking awesome song. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. WWE used that one quite a bit. Yeah, they, <laughs> they use it. they use it for more than one pay per view. They use it for No Way Out two thousand seven, yeah. I think. Yeah, that was exciting. It was. I'm, I just um. I love it, man. I love, I love music. Like, uh, there's a band that I recently just started listening to that not many people know of 
They're called TV on the radio. Dude. They're super good band. Wolf Like Me is such a good oh, song. And so is, uh, so is Happy Idiot. I think, I think that's the one you tried to, you played for me that one time. I yeah. Believe. It was on like episode yeah. of Breaking Bad. No, no, that was DLZ. DLZ, ah. That you was see, a great song. I know, of, I know of TV on the radio from that movie, Never Back Down. Have yeah. you ever seen that movie? I have not. It's an uh, awesome movie. It's, like but fighting I, people beating the shit out of each other pretty much yeah I got very, I got introduced to them through Breaking Bad very generic coming of age story it's a good movie you should check it out yeah and th- and there's like some other bands that I listen to that that are very very interesting like the Bloodhound Gang if you've never heard the Bloodhound Gang I definitely wouldn't listen to it with your mom I tell you the truth though most they probably all have heard. The Bad Touch. The Bad Touch, or better known as the Discovery Channel song. Yeah, because, like, everyone, you know, you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. Let's do what I could do on the Discovery, Discovery Channel. Channel. It's that weird, line it's, is it's, classic. It's weird that I know all the words of that song. That is weird, but it's okay. It's okay, because it's a great song. All right. And, and Green, like, you like you liked uh, Blink-182, and then, and then I liked... Uh, Blink. I like Green a- Green Day a, whole, a little bit better than I did Blink One Eighty Two. Did you almost say like Green Eighty Two? I did. <laughs> I almost said Blink Day. Blink Day. Ooh, that'd be a good name for a band. Blink well, Day. You know, yeah. I like Blink. I like. I still like Blink One Eighty Two a lot. Yeah. I think it's just because like they recently just broke up for like the fifteenth time. They didn't break time. up again. Yeah. Well, no. Travis DeLong left. Tom DeLonge. Whatever the fuck his name is. He's. He's probably just relapsing on drugs again or something. I Me, mean, I ha- I have listened to his other band, uh, Angels and Airwaves. Angels and Airwaves. They're they're okay. If you're listening to Boxcar Racer, it's no. him and Travis Barker's band from like 2002. Oh, it's good. And then there's a band called Plus Forty Four, yeah. and it's Mark Hoppus and Travis Barker, hmm. and they're from like 2007, like right after Blink One Eighty Two broke up. The first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, like I think I liked Blink One Eighty Two a lot because like I remember I recorded like a. Uh, Blink-182 loaded thing used to come on, like, VH1. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. And, uh... And, you know, it had that song, Adam's Song, on it. Yeah. And if you've ever watched a music video to Adam's Song, man, it's yeah. instant feels. It is. And, like, it, it just, it just like, made me feel some way, you know? Because I was, like, 14. And I was just yeah. in, like, an awkward-as-fuck stage in my life. And I really loved the way that Travis Barker was. And I loved, like, the whole style, you know? Because I yeah. liked... Because I like the cargo shorts and the long socks, and you still know I dress like that still, except today because I was out of long socks. <laughs> but, um, um, but you know, and just it's just always been a thing I've really been into, just like yeah. the whole look and you know pop punk in general is my thing. Yeah. I like pop punk. And, music. and and there's a band who used to be like really good, and now they're they just suck. Paramore. Like, I used to love Paramore. I love Paramore, I used man. to love them. And then now I'm listening, like, because sometimes at work, they'll, they'll play Ain't It Fun. I'm like, they're just not as good as they used to be. They're not as good as they used to be. They're, now, they're like, oh, come on. I mean, Ain't It Fun's a catchy song, but they're just not as good as they used to be. It's a, It's got a good message. Yeah. And, you know, like, I think my favorite song by them is Decode off of the first Twilight movie. Have you ever heard yeah. that one? Yeah, uh, there's a band that was in the second movie, uh, Death Cab for Cutie. You used to hate. Death- I hate Death Cab for Cutie, and I and I love Death Cab for man, Cutie. Like, They're I don't so know, they, good. They put out that one song, and like I might like it now. I haven't yeah. heard it in so long. What, what was it? I'll possess your heart because that thing got played all the time. It played a lot, dude. Mm-hmm. It was it got annoying. You yeah. know who's a, a good? You know, I remember them. They were popular when we first or when I first started listening to music like Flyleaf. And yeah. An- Amberlin or something. Do you remember those guys? Amberlin's like a one-hit wonder with they, like Bill Good Drag. Dude, that was such a good song though. Yeah, and there's like one band like Silver Sun Pickups. Dude, like, they are so much more successful than I thought they were. They're so good. Like I just thought they're like whenever they came out with Bloody Mary, I'm like, oh, they're just gonna be a one-hit wonder. And then they came out with like The Pit. I was like, oh, they're gonna be a the two-hit wonder. The Pit is an awesome song. And then I started playing a whole lot of rock band and guitar here. I'm like, oh, they have a whole lot yeah. bigger music category than I thought they did. See, I want. I I don't know, man. I just. I love it. I love... You know, I don't think about a lot of these songs anymore. Yeah. And like, that's what I hate. Because, like, I, yeah. I, I listen to music still a lot, but I don't, like, sit down and, like, listen to it like I used to. Yeah. Like, sometimes, like... Because I, I have Spotify. Yeah. And so, like, I'm constantly listening to music. And then sometimes I'll go outside of my music zone and, like, test out new artists. And so sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. It's hard for me to do that. Yeah. 
I mean, sometimes people will suggest a song for me to listen to. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> I'm usually such a dick. I never check out songs people tell me to. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, if I do, I'll let the person know. I'm like, eh, it was, it was okay. That's, that's kind of got introduced with Twiz Khalifa. Because my friend William was like, hey, man, check out Wiz Khalifa. I was like, okay. I'll check him out. And then I actually do like him. I like Wiz Khalifa. I like a yeah. lot of rap music, you know? I, yeah, I, I listen. I, I'm a huge Eminem fan. I'm a huge, I've been a huge Eminem fan. And, and BC Boy fan. Yeah, but B-boy I don't really consider the Beastie Boys rap. They're, they're technically rock rap. They're like in, yeah, they're in the middle. They're yeah, both. They're, yeah, they're basically like what Bloodhound Gang is. They're just rap rock. And then Linkin Park's technically in that category as well with rap rock. Their first couple albums. Yeah, their first two albums. God, they're, those are the days, man. Yeah. I wish that we were alive to actually know of Linkin Park and stuff, really, whenever they had really good music. No, I mean, offense, no offense I mean, they, to them they now. They still have great music. No offense to them now. It was just now. that fourth album that was just shit. A Thousand yeah. Sons, that album was just but shit. You know, you know, here's how <laughs> yeah. it is. And like, the people we're still on this podcast, they can't see my hands. But just imagine them going up and down. Hybrid Theory was at the top. Yeah. And then Meteor was right underneath Hybrid Theory. Yeah. It was, and then Minutes to Midnight and me, was a little bit under Meteor. Yeah. And then... A Thousand Suns, that shit went all the way down to negative 100. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah, and then Living Things kind of brought them Living back Things up. was like... <sighs> yeah. And, and, and then the Hunting Party just fucking... <laughs> I, I like I liked Hunting Party. I liked it. I liked See, it. now I gave Hunting Party uh, uh, which is still not as good as Minutes to Midnight. Because I mean, the, the first like, three I, Lincoln, I liked it. Because like, it, it was, it, they went back to their old heavy stuff. First three Linkin Park albums were the best yeah. to me. I'll agree with you. Especially, and I think I, I think Meteor is my favorite. Yeah, I actually, I actually, actually like Minutes to Midnight because like whenever I got Minutes to Midnight, my parents were going through a divorce, oh. so that was like the album I listened to all the fucking time. Live on all the rest, bro. That shit gets to me. Yeah, actually, I actually didn't li- listen to that song. I actually listened to Hands Held High more than I did that one. Really? And, and Valentine's Day. I, I listened, listened to those two songs. I listened more. to Bleed It Out a lot. I did too. <laughs> Have you seen the music video for that? Yes, it's like, very very. Different. Like I, I enjoyed it because like they had that like Chester Bennington and Mike Shinoda both had to learn the lyrics backwards. Really? Because they they did the music video in reverse. Yeah. So they had to learn all the lyrics backwards. <laughs> and a couple artists have done that. That they've gone out and listened to their uh, learn their song backwards so they can just do the music video backwards, which That's is pretty crazy. cool. Yeah. All right. Um, do you have any like future life goals? coming up any soon like cause I know um you're going to college right of course you gotta go to, gotta do you got to man well you don't technically have to well you don't have to but it's <laughs> smart to yeah cause like I, mean, I cause honestly don't wanna go I don't either but I'm going just so I can like be a teacher yeah alright well I'm just gonna lay it out for you right now man my life's about to start yeah I'm excited because I need a job first off, though. Because, like, man, I want to, you know, like, I want to be a wrestler. Yeah. And I still want to be a wrestler. I've been saying that ever since, what, I was in eighth grade, maybe, that I've been serious about it. Yeah. I've loved wrestling all my life, too. So, I want to, right now, I'm just, I want to get through school, of course. Yeah. But I'd love to start training as a wrestler. I want to get a job. And, like, I've been working out a lot and stuff lately. I want to just work out and work and go to school. And I just want to... Because, like, eventually I'll work up to it, man. And yeah. I, I'll have money and I'll be able to start. And, you know, even if it doesn't work out well, that's fine. But I want to at least give it a shot. Because I'll be damned if I go through my whole life without trying. You yeah. know? Yeah. Like, like I was trying... Like, my, my goal is to be... Me and you were both going to be history teachers, which is which is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I was going to be history teacher just so I could have a fallback plan. Because... I I, I kind of I want to be a wrestler, but I also want to be a comedian and uh, an actor at the same time. You just want to do all kinds of shit, man. I do. Because like, cause I'm also I'm also a drummer, which not many people know that. I also do drum. Uh, I'm a drummer. And I, I was in a band uh, at the beginning of January, but we kind of like our schedules got so conflicted that we just kind of fizzled out. Mm-hmm. We uh, uh, and the band members, we still occasionally talk here and there, but. We haven't really done anything. We did, we did write one song. We never named it, but we did write one song. How does it sound? 
It was pretty good, actually. It, like, it had, like, a... It had, like, a very, like, grunge mixed in with, like, soft rock. Yeah. It was, like, a very weird feel. But it, it sounded good, though. My goals... And, you know, one time, back to theater, Miss Blake was asking us kind of like, what what do you want out of life? Yeah. And, it, you know, I thought about it a lot, and we got you got to me, and I just said, I don't want to settle. Yeah. I want to just squeeze everything I can out of life, man. But, like, I have my goals, and I want to get my goals, and I'm not going to stop. Until I at least give it everything I got. Yeah. You know, I refuse to quit. I'm not going to quit. That's why, like, you know, like, I, that's why, I, that's another thing when it came to football, man. And just, like, all this stuff, like, I've been building up for the past two and a half years. Getting to where I'm about to be now. And I just got to fucking go. Yeah. Uh, and we, we actually did talk to, uh... C.W. C.W. Anderson. Anderson and, uh... Did he say he would actually train us, or he would actually, like, he wanted us to do some, like, small stuff first? He wanted to train us. He Dude, told us he would. We, we, should, we should totally hit him up, man. That's why I want to go to East Carolina. Because <laughs> East Carolina is in Greenville, and Raleigh's only, like, I mean, Raleigh's not really that far away. Like, where yeah. he lives from Greenville, it's like an hour and a half. But, I mean, it's a lot farther than, you know, like, three hours from here. Yeah. You know, so I'd be, like, right there, and I could go down there on the weekends. And, man, I just want to... I want to give my heart to it, and I already yeah. have, really. When you think about it, because you you know you know what I've tried to put myself through. You yeah, know, you know you know how hard I've yeah. worked. And we've also just done some <laughs> shit in your basement. Yeah, we've, we've done some. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that on here. Yeah, that, that that's 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 uh, that's, some, that's some stories <laughs> for different days. Yeah, I I just want to be successful. Yeah, me too. And uh, whether... I just I honestly just just like I don't I don't want to let anyone down like because because i've i kind of feel like after after high school because i was i was at my peak there and after high school i was i was kind of like where do i go from here mm-hmm. and then like we don't have any we don't have any many comedy clubs around here no we don't and we don't have anything for open mic night for comedy either so i really can't do much here so like i would have to go to charlotte to do a lot of my stuff and 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 like i've thought about doing what like mick foley did he just kind of like after wrestling, after he retired, he's like you know, what? I'm gonna be a comedian, mm-hmm. and he's great at it. Uh, and Dolph, Dolph Ziggler's doing the same thing too. Yeah, he's being a comedian. But he also dated a comedian too. Really? Yeah, he dated. Shot? No, Amy Schumer. Did he dated Amy Schumer? Really? Yeah. She, huh. she she's not that funny, but I mean she's no, she's not. <laughs> she's not. But at least Comedy Central gave her a shot. You know, they gave Sarah Silverman a shot, too. That didn't fizzle out so well. <laughs> no, well, not for her. Uh, uh, you know, and, like, I want to go to school, too. Yeah. And, like, I, I just want I want to get my degree, of yeah. course, and my, my uh, bachelor's yeah. and my associate's. Like, I actually decided to take a year off, and... I'm going to... I'll probably end up having to do that, too, because, like, I'm going to have to pay so much money and take out loans and shit just to go to CBCC. Yeah. And plus, plus how much, ever much I'm gonna have to when I go off somewhere. Yeah. So like, and you know, and like I also, <laughs> I want to get a girlfriend too. Like, that's up there. I mean, you know. Yeah. You you know I'm talking about. Like, yeah, no. And like I don't know, I ain't, I ain't trying to just be with any girl though. I mean, I I have an amazing girlfriend. No, no. Like like my my, I mean, she's amazing. And you do. You're happy, man. That's fucking awesome. I am. Good this for is, you. This is the happiest I've been in like a long time. And, and and after high school, like, cause you, cause you, you kind of know, like, after I graduated, like in August, I just kind of went like downhill, mm-hmm. and like I was like a huge depression slope. You didn't talk to anybody for a while. I did not. Like I just stayed home all the time. Cause you didn't work either for a while. Yeah, from like from like the from like September to like mid October, I was unemployed because mm-hmm. you know because because I thought. Uh, you thought you had you had a good job and then like you quit Zaxby's and then you got laid off and shit and you just yeah and you then, got fucked over honestly and then I and then I finally Toys R Us finally called like hey you went to that factory too didn't you for, for like, a, and two, then like you hurt your head or some shit yeah for like two days they threw a couch at me I, I didn't catch it in time it hit me in the face you know and like but uh but like I just 
be yeah, like she actually brought me out of my depression slope, which is which is good. That's good, man. I'm yeah. glad. I'm happy for you. Thank you, man. And, and and I really hope you find someone like that me too. Me too, man. And it's just like I feel like I but I also understand that, that I need to work on myself some. Yeah. And like that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm just taking it day by day. Like I, whenever I get home I wanna work out. Because I, I have to, man. I have to at least every day. Yeah. And you know, I just I want I want it. I I, I slack off a lot, you know, but I, I want it. Yeah. And like, I don't know, man. My thing is, I always, I always, I always have huge crushes on girls that are way too hot for me. Which honestly, though, like they shouldn't be because I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go with your Kanye West ego. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, about to, I'm about to sound like a huge douche. You are. Are you ready for this? You're, 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 a, you're a huge asshole. <laughs> I am awesome. Calm down, Miz. And I... Like, I'm just going to say this, man. Go for it. I'm just... Oh, God, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. Fuck it. <laughs> you only live once. I'm the shit, okay? And, you know, I'm just going to end it at that. I feel like I'm awesome. You are the kitty cities. And like, I, you know, and it's just like, I don't get it because me a year ago, I understood. Or maybe a year and a half ago. I wasn't that great. I really wasn't. Because I didn't have anything. But now I can be like, well, I mean, I've done all this shit now, man. I have been to the top of the mountain. Uh, now you're going down. A little bitty mountain. <laughs> and I'm going down a little bitty mountain. It was like a mentor. But, here. like, you see, like, and it's just like, it comes to, like, a job, too. Because yeah. I try all these jobs, man. And I could give these people so much. I could give some girls so much, but nobody wants it. And, you know, I just, I just don't get it. Because you're a nice guy. It's because I'm a nice guy. It's because I'm a nice guy. And, you know, that's all I'm going to say because I'm getting way too worked up and I'm going to start naming names and that's never good. It is not. Because <laughs> we we need to, I need to keep fans. You need to keep fans. Cause, and like, you see, you never know who's listening. Like, I need to keep fans because I want people to come back and listen to me. And this, just, this, is, this, is, my, this is the only second, this is the second podcast and I don't want all my fans to leave after you. <laughs> But I'm just gonna throw this out there, man. Well, all that James McDowell guy. I don't. I don't want to come back and listen yeah, to this shit. Dude, people know who I am. They love me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they don't love me. But yeah, they like you. They like me a little bit. I don't know, man. Like I told this girl, I had a crush on her once. How'd that go? She thought I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Are you bullshitting me?" <laughs> I'm like, "No." Oh my I, god. Cause, she, Cause like somebody else said, some people knew I was gonna tell her. Because they told me I should. Yeah. And, uh... So, like, somebody had, like, asked her if I had talked to her yet. Yeah. And so, like, that's why she thought that I was bullshitting her, I think. But I don't know if she's... I don't know if she's not even... I mean, she's pretty fucking... I don't know. I think she's, like, the most beautiful girl in the world, to tell you the truth. But I ain't gonna say names or nothing. Well, I, uh... James, I appreciate you coming on the podcast today. Um, yeah, you're more than welcome to come back. <laughs> it's been fun. If the fans <laughs> are still here and they're... I'm sure they're still here. You probably gained fans. Yeah. Yeah, I probably did. Uh, at least I hope I did. I hope you um, did too, man. I, and, I hope that I can contribute to this and help yeah. you because it, it, it means a lot to you, man, and you mean a lot to me. Well, I, you mean a lot to me too, man. I appreciate you coming on. And you know what, I'm just going to, I need to finish up a little bit though, because I don't want to come off as that big of a douchebag, as that big of an egotistical no, douche. You, <laughs> I, I, you know, like I have an ego, and like everyone has an ego. Yeah. You, you have an ego. I do. And you know, like, I don't want everyone to think that I'm better than anyone, because I'm... I am far from it. I am far from better than anyone. But, um, and you know, I, um... I'm just not an asshole, man. I'm just a regular dude. You're a regular James McDowell. And I hope that the girl that I was talking about doesn't realize that... I hope she doesn't listen to this, because she'll probably know exactly who it is. <laughs> I, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she probably... You're saw, right. Most girls don't believe me when I say I like them. No, it's, it's probably like, oh, 
a podcast with Dylan Nell mm, and James McDell. Mm-mm. <laughs> double, double no. <laughs> no, this thing is almost an hour and a half. I'm not going to listen to this thing at all. <laughs> you know, I hope, I hope that this that that being an hour and a half doesn't like affect people. Yeah, cause because like you know we've covered a lot of good shit. We have, and most people listen to this before they go to sleep, and sometimes they they fall asleep listening to it. Well, I'm glad, man. I'm glad that you that I'm you glad that it. I'm glad that I could possibly be the last thing you hear before you go to sleep at night. That's the last thing I want in my life. Well, you've heard it before, buddy. Well, <laughs> that sounds creepy. I'm out of here, man. All right, well, I appreciate you coming by, James. Yeah, I'm uh, glad. It was nice. It was a good experience. I've never been on the podcast before. You were more than welcome to come back. And uh, for the fans out there, uh, thank you for making last week's episode 80, 80 plays. That means a lot to me because I was thinking to get at least 15 to 20, and I appreciate you guys by blowing my expe- expectations out, out of the water and making it 80. Um, I hope you guys listen to this one, and, and if you guys have any feedback, please let please please email me at any time, or send me a message on Facebook. Uh, and I would also like to say uh, thanks to everyone who has liked the Facebook page. If you haven't liked the Facebook page, please do. It's at, it's at Macho Burger Productions, and go follow us on Twitter. And we should yeah, that, that's about it. That's, that's the only social media we have so far, just Facebook and Twitter. Uh, thank you guys for coming back this week, and I hope you have an amazing day. I am Dylan Nell, and this has been the Macho Burger Podcast.